Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be discussing tech news. The first of which is Intel related, with Canon Lake specifically related to release dates, feature sets, that type of thing. And then we're going to be focusing our attentions on the GTX 1080 Ti. So we're going to start out with Intel's Canon Lake. Now, just so we're all abundantly clear, Canon Lake is the successor to KB Lake, which in turn was the successor to Sky Lake. So KB Lake is going to be made available early next year, so let's say January-ish, <clears throat> whereas uh, Canon Lake is going to hit 2017, but it's going to be considerably later in 2017. It's looking like the fourth quarter, and this is popped up thanks to DigiTimes, where, and I quote, Intel reportedly is planning to add USB 3.1 and Wi-Fi functions into the motherboard chipsets, and the new design may be implemented in the upcoming 300 series scheduled to be released at the end of 2017. According to sources from motherboard makers, Intel declined to comment on market speculation, which isn't really surprising. Now, this of course naturally means that these processors, Canon Lake, will be the 8th generation desktop processors. And naturally, at the moment, USB 3.1 Wi-Fi needs to be farmed out to other manufacturers, for example, Broadcom, Realtek, a couple of the big ones. There are a couple of questions which naturally we can start levying regarding this. The first of which, is it going to be LGA 1151 compatible? Now, for clarification's sake, that is the case when it comes to Skylake and also KB Lake. You may need to do a BIOS update, but the 100 and the 200 series boards are happy to coexist with the other's respective processors. Now, whether this is going to extend to, once again, Canon Lake, we do not know. What is for certain is Canon Lake is going to be based on a, two, a 10, excuse me, not a 2NM, that would be very impressive, a 10NM process node. <laughs> Naturally, this will mean you're going to see the natural improvements to faster clocks, improved power efficiency and all of that stuff. However, it will have the same basic processor hierarchy. There will be a couple of small differences, however. One of which is it looks like Canon Lake is going to bring in native DDR4 2400 uh, memory support, which is obviously going to be a pretty nice um, for um, applications which require a lot of memory bandwidth. However, there are a couple of conflicting pieces of information that I feel I should make you all aware of, and we have covered this previously, so I will glaze over it pretty quickly in this video because we have so much more to cover. But, essentially, there was a previous leak which shown a bit of ambiguity. Now, this leak showed... Excuse me, that was my phone because I'm an idiot and forgot to put it on um, silent. Okay, that's all fixed. So, a previous leak said that Canon Lake S, which is going to be the desktop variant, is going to be part of the Coffee Lake family of processors. Now, the really weird thing here is that... Those CPUs supposedly will not be on a 10NM process, if these rumours are accurate. Now here's where it becomes even more confusing. Canon Lake are built on 10NM, but one of the reasons is supposedly so that they can offer up to 6 cores for desktop PCs. Now this has happened thanks to roadmap leaks. Basically, Intel feel finally that we should probably get higher core counts for the average mainstream user and I do feel that some of this is being put on them um, from pressure from AMD regarding Zen. So what does that all mean? Well it's kind of difficult to know. All we do know is that Co Canon Lake slash Coffee Lake will be happening in 2017 late. The 300 series boards are going to pop along and it's still ambiguous whether we're going to see support for everyone's favourite thing in the world, LGA 1151. So, I'm not sure how much we cleared up there, but hey, we know stuff's being released at some point late next year. So, that's quite good, right? Speaking of things which are quite good, let's move on to NVIDIA's GTX 1080 Ti. I say it in such a tone because this card has been... Not just rumours, we know it exists. I mean, it's it's just like, we know it's happening at some point, most likely. Now, the reason I say most likely is because there have been some also rumours regarding a 14NM Pascal refresh. We'll just glaze over that in a moment. So, the 1080 Ti, videocards.com have spotted a shipping manifest from Zuba. Now, this Zuba entry shows us that there is a... 
GPU which exists from NVIDIA which has 10 gigabytes of GDDR uh, memory embedded upon it. Now we don't know the core count what we do know is it's going to be using a GP102 core which is the same as the GTX 1080 Ti which is unsurprising we can probably make a few assumptions that it's going to have fewer uh, SMs SMs by the way of course are streaming multiprocessors and basically an, a number of CUDA cores 128 go into one SM unit along with a bunch of ROPs, 8 ROPs I believe and a few other bits and pieces anyway um, so I'm sorry uh, 8 TMUs, not 8 ROPs. But anyway, what we can make an assumption of is that we're seeing probably around 44 to maybe 52 SM units enabled for this a particular card with the GTX 1080 Ti, which means it should theoretically sit in performance levels between the 1080 and the GTX Titan X, which I still feel is a terrible name, by the way. But one thing which NVIDIA have done pretty consistently is make a memory difference between the TIEs and the Titans. For example, with the 980 TIE, it had half the amount of memory than the equivalent Titan. And they've done this over and over and over again, even with the 780 TIE, for example, although there was higher memory derivatives released later on. So what we're looking at here is a card, according to the Shipper Manifest, which has 384-bit, uh, 10 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. But the really weird thing is the fact it is 384-bit memory bus, which is definitely at odds with 10 gigabytes of memory. I have done this in an article, by the way, as well. I can't remember if I mentioned that. It's linked in the video description. Now, it's possible that these engineering samples simply do not have the memory controllers disabled maybe they're redundant or whatever it could be a typo it could be a screw up I mean it's possible I suppose that even the um, 10 gigabytes is a screw up so normal thing take this with a pinch of salt until we actually hear final you know clarification from NVIDIA and we start seeing boards leaked into the wild and whatever I wouldn't be surprised if this card does exist but as I mentioned, there is rumours that Pascal is going to have a refresh at some point in 2017. Now I have covered this before, but um, I'll link that article, by the way, in the video description again. But this Pascal refresh will supposedly be named the GTX 11 series, which obviously currently we're at the 10 series, and supposedly those speeds are going to hit 2 gigahertz plus. Now. The main reason NVIDIA supposedly, and I know I keep using that word, but I don't want to tell you it's factually you know, accurate. Supposedly the reason behind this is because of Vega. And remember, Vega 10 is going to be the high-end cards. Vega 11, not so much. It's going to be the equivalents of the, of the RX 470, the 480, or what have you. And supposedly, NVIDIA are a bit nervous about this, and that's why they're releasing this refresh. To be honest, if they didn't, and NVIDIA were pretty much blow for blow for AMD. In other words, Vega 10 was only as fast as Pascal. I'm pretty sure most of us would agree that that was pretty, pretty damn disappointing on the path of Vega. So I think it's natural for NVIDIA to think, oh, okay, well, they're going to release another GPU, which is going to be faster an hour, so we at least need to have some type of counter available. It makes an awful lot of sense, right? I guess we can only wait and see. To clarify, Volta is a completely different architecture, and this is not a refresh, it is the successor to Pascal. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video, I'll see you soon, normal thing, like, share, comment, subscribe. Thanks very much for watching the video, I'll see you soon, take care of yourselves, bye for now.